Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to look at the experiment for discharging a capacitor. So let's get started. We'll now look at the experiment for discharging of a capacitor. And this actually follows on from the charging a capacitor experiment, which you might have seen in a previous video. Both the charging and discharging of a capacitor experiments can often be done at the same time when doing this in class. So the aim of this experiment is to observe the variation of current and potential difference with time for the discharging cycle of a capacitor in an RC circuit. The method here is very similar to what we had for the charging of a capacitor experiment, where we collect a 2200 microfarad capacitor, 10 kilo ohm resistor, ammeter, voltmeter, 4.5 volt battery and a stopwatch. You would then want to set up the equipment as shown here. So instead of having the switch set to X this time, as was in the charging case, we now have the switch set to Y. And this is because in order to discharge the capacitor, we no longer need the capacitor to be connected to the supply voltage. So we've sort of removed this left-hand side section from the circuit. So firstly, you would set the switch to X and wait until the capacitor is fully charged, i.e. when the voltage across it is equal to the supply voltage. But you would already be in this position if you had just carried out the charging of a capacitor experiment. Then what you would want to do is set the switch to Y and start the stopwatch. So you would move the switch to Y here, and this would allow the current to start flowing off of the capacitor plates. We would then record values of current from the ammeter and potential difference from the voltmeter every 10 seconds starting at 0 seconds. Before doing the experiment, you'd probably want to create a table to record values of time, potential difference and current, and then once you've got your values, you could plot scatter graphs of potential difference across the capacitor versus time and current in the capacitor or current in the circuit versus time. And remember, you would want to draw curves of best fit through the plotted points. So this time for a discharging capacitor, for potential difference across time, the graph would look like this, where we've got a curve that goes down the way over time, whereas for the current in the circuit or current in the capacitor, which will be the same in this case because we've got a series circuit, you can see we've got a current that decreases to zero, and the reason I'm saying decreasing here and not increasing is because we start at a maximum negative current down here, and this actually decreases up to zero. So we get this curve that goes up the way for the current against time. If you were to connect the voltmeter across the resistor this time to determine the variation of potential difference across it with time during the discharging process, the following graph would be obtained. So this time we've got potential difference across the resistor against time with a curve that goes up the way. So again, notice that this will be opposite to what we saw for the capacitor. So here we have the potential difference across the capacitor decreasing over time, whereas the potential difference across the resistor will increase over time. And that's because, remember, we have a potential divider circuit. So if I go back to the circuit diagram here, remember we can ignore this section because we've got the switch set to position Y. We've got this series circuit where the capacitor and resistor are in series with each other. And if during discharging, the charge on this capacitor is going to decrease over time, then the potential difference across it must also decrease over time, which means the resistor must take a bigger share of that supply voltage, so therefore the potential difference across the resistor increases over time. So what can we conclude from the discharging capacitor experiment? Well, it says here that it can be seen from the graphs above that during the discharging process, the potential difference across the capacitor decreases from the value it was charged to vs the supply voltage to zero. The current in the circuit decreases from an initial value of minus vs over r to zero. This is actually a maximum negative value, and you might be wondering why the value is negative. Well, we say the value is negative since the discharging current flows in the opposite direction to the charging current. And you might remember from the motion topic in our dynamic universe that if we want to show a change in direction, a way to do that is to change the sign of something. So if we want to show that the current has changed direction and is flowing in the opposite direction to the charging current, then we need to change the sign of the current. So we start with a negative discharging current, which decreases to zero. So going back to the circuit diagram, just to help you visualize this, Imagine you've got your electrons flowing from the negative terminal of the battery here, round, through the ammeter and onto this capacitor plate here. So this lower plate of the capacitor will become negatively charged and the upper plate will become positively charged. And that is the case for the charging of the capacitor when this switch is set to X. However, when we change the switch to position Y, then the current will start to flow off of the capacitor plates. So because the negative charge is all built up on this lower plate, the only direction for the negative charge to move in now the electrons is downwards off of that lower plate. And these electrons will now flow down through the ammeter here, along here, round and back through Y and back through the resistor. But at this section here, you can see that if the current was initially flowing along this way to reach the capacitor plate, it's now flowing in the opposite direction down the way off of that plate. So we show that opposite direction with the negative sign for the current. Lastly, it says the potential difference across the resistor increases from zero up to the supply voltage Vs. And remember that is opposite to what happens for the potential difference across the capacitor. 
So how can we explain what we've just seen? Well, once the capacitor is fully charged, the potential difference across it is equal to the supply voltage Vs. When the switch is moved to the discharging position at Y, there's no longer a battery to provide energy to each charge passing through the source. This means that the potential difference across the capacitor and the resistance of the resistor set the value of the maximum current which can flow. This is calculated using a rearranged form of Ohm's law, V equals IR, to get I max equals VC over R, where VC is just the potential difference across the capacitor to begin with, and that's usually going to be the supply voltage. We have already seen that the current value will be negative since the electrons are flowing onto the negative plate during charging and flowing off of the negative plate during discharging. This is because the negative electrons are repelled from the negative plate of the capacitor and are attracted to the positive plate. The current will therefore start at its maximum negative value and decrease until all of the electrons have reached the positive plate, giving zero amps. And because remember there's no power supply anymore for the discharging case, when all of those electrons have reached the positive plate, no more current will flow, the current will stop. Lastly, it says that as the current increases through the resistor, the potential difference across it also increases. By Ohm's law, remember, potential difference or voltage is directly proportional to the current. It increases from zero volts up to the supply voltage Vs, i.e. doing the opposite to the capacitor. I'm just going to show you a quick simulation to help you visualise some of the graphs that we've seen. Let's say I've got my 33 microfarad capacitor and 150 kilo ohm resistor, and we've got our setup here for the discharging case, just like what was in the notes. If I press play here, you can hopefully see that we've started a negative maximum value for the current, and this is going to decrease to zero over time, where the current will no longer flow. You can also see our potential difference decreases from a maximum value down to zero over time. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.